I screw? Oh, I totally screwed myself. Nope. Just, just gonna. There we go. And go ahead and. Uh, God. Oh no, there's. Oh jeez. Oh, I'm so unhappy. Oh, it's. I'm still inside of it. <laughs> hey, what's up, everyone? I'm No BS. And today we're going to be talking about playing VR on the RX 6600. Now, I was really surprised to see that nobody's made a video on this, so I just decided to go ahead and make this. Um, I know after the pandemic, after COVID and everything, a lot of people started getting into VR. There's been a huge boost in Oculus Quest sales and a lot of other VR headsets that people are buying up. And now with the price of graphics cards coming down, I know a lot of people are probably wondering if they can upgrade a graphics card and get decent performance in a lot of the games that they got into during the pandemic. Now I was able to snag up an XFX SWFT uh, 210, which is kind of a silly name. In the current market, I still highly recommend Radeon cards because they tend to be dropping in price quicker than their NVIDIA counterparts. Generally speaking, uh, in compared to the 3060, the performance is extremely similar. Uh, if you compare several games, they have almost the same performance. They kind of just trade blows back and forth. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in some VR games and see what the performance looks like. Today we are taking a look at the RX 6600 in Boneworks. So I am starting this off. I just decided to do a full-blown torture test. So we have everything at max here. I'm keeping the physics at 80 hertz because I'm it's a 72 hertz display with the Oculus Quest One. Um, but other than that, we've got shadows max, MSAA max, ambient occlusion is enabled. Adaptive resolution is off to prevent any oddities with um, frame rates. It's looking better than it is full texture resolution and muzzle flash is on. Now, I really like using central station here as a bit of a benchmark. Um, this, there is an area in here that I'll show you where I've had uh, the most issues with this game. Uh, not on this card specifically, but with a previous card that I had, it ran the game uh, pretty fine with a 5500 XT on lower settings. But when I got to an area here, I saw a big drop off. Now. Before I go ahead, this is the area that I had the most issues with on this game. Um, overall, it's run pretty smooth, but you'll probably start to see as I walk up here, frame rate starts to dip off a little bit. Um, now this is this um, headset will lock the max frame rate at 72 hertz, um, but you will see a dip in frame rate. Quite honestly, this is the worst performance I've seen in the entire game. Um, maybe one other area, but. Oh, but other than that, the rest of it has been a smooth experience. And this is, is worth, as bad as it gets. The reason for that is because we have all of these textures. We've got all these buildings that are back behind there, back behind here, all this stuff. We've got that clock tower, we have the rain, we got lightning. So there's a lot going on in this scene. It's not surprising that you know, we're experiencing some performance issues. But overall, I would say actually standing here being here um i don't get motion sick very easily i'm definitely not having issues it looks a little bit choppy especially when i when i like whip and then stop more so with the joystick but if i whip and then stop you'll kind of see some smearing but honestly <laughs> if this is as bad as it gets with max settings game's totally freaking playable um if you want to get more frame rates you can just reduce the settings a little bit let's see here All right, get him once. Whoop. Oh, did I? Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. There we go. I feel like I dropped a magazine. Guess not. All right. We're good. I think there's a guy over here. Oh. There we go. Nice and smooth. I mean, it's <laughs> pretty much as, as good as I could hope for. Um, now, something to note is that if you are using a higher end headset, or even a Quest 2, Quest 2 has a uh, pretty high um, resolution. I think it's 2160 by 2160. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but it's a pretty big boost in um, resolution. So you will see worse performance on that headset. And um, you may not 
And that also that headset also does night gear, so you will not be maxing that headset out with this card in all likelihood. But you can uh, reduce resolution to get a better frame rate, just like any game. Oh, this thing is actually available directly in Steam VR. All right, so we are just right back where I was here, and the only thing I've changed is enabled the overclock that I usually use for this game. We're gonna come over here, gonna grab a gun. The main thing I wanna see is if the performance in that main area I was showing you is any uh, better. Now, one thing I'll say, um, just to keep uh, in mind, is that uh, I am running OBS while I am playing this. Um, so that's gonna have some performance hit, probably nothing super drastic, but just so you're aware, in case you have exactly the same setup. Come on. Ah, breaking some wood. All right, we're not cavemen. We have technology. All right, let's go run up there and see how she does. Let's see. Definitely a little bit of stutteriness. Let's see, am I seeing that? There's some smearing when I look side to side. I feel, honestly... The difference is small enough to where it could just be a placebo. I want to say it looks a little bit more smooth. Um, honestly, yeah, I feel like this, this does. Uh, I feel like this does look more smooth. Looking out and everything, it feels like this is a higher frame rate with low with lower frame times. Um, so that's definitely <laughs> it's a perceptual improvement. Um, it could just be that increasing the power limit on this card and uh, increasing the minimum um, uh, frequency uh, is helping keep things a little bit more consistent. Quite honestly though, when it comes to virtually any piece of hardware, um, overclocking is not going to be the difference between something being playable and something being unplayable. Um, so if you don't feel comfortable with overclocking your card or maybe you're thinking about getting an overclocked version of this card, um, I would not factor that in too heavily. Um, this, uh, as the Swift model that I'm using here is a pretty bog standard um, 6600 non-XT, so you know pretty much any card you get you can expect similar performance so long as you're getting decent thermals and your CPU is good enough. Let's see if I can there we go, crawl up there, there we go, and I don't remember if this, I'm colorblind, so I guess that doesn't, that's not the same color, um, awkward, okay, well with all that said, with that complete embarrassment, let's jump up to the next game and see how we're performing there. I have muted myself, let's go ahead and turn on in here, that's a good map to do, we're just gonna go ahead and jump on in here to Club Orion, now this just gonna tell you right off the bat, this is, I'm not expecting this to be a <laughs> completely smooth experience. Um, in VR chat, the main issue is not so much your graphics card. A lot of it comes more down to the quality of your internet and the optimization of the server. You know, how well the server's set up um, and all that. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see some poor frame rates the main thing is just how playable this is. You know, you know, nobody's really playing VR chat to have the best um, visual experience. You know, most perfect uh, frame rates and everything like that. A lot of it is much more about just socializing and hanging out and having fun. So you lock doors. We're just gonna go ahead and slide through some different rooms here and kind of see what the performance looks like. This is, um, <laughs> this is a bit of a, this music's a bit of a trip. When I look at all these lights, I'm probably going to see some big dips in performance. Um, of course, the good people of VRChat have thought about a lot of this, and you can, you can turn this stuff off. There we go. So we can turn off the lights. So you can see if we want, it can just be a darker room, so we can get much better frame rates. Um, also curious to see in here, there's a built-in um, ping and FPS counter. So you can see here, ping's sitting around 77. Uh, so that's going to be kind of the biggest impact on performance, and you can also just adjust all this different stuff. Most of the decent worlds 
have that kind of stuff built in. We've got pretty, pretty solid performance in that room. Um, probably with a few little hitches, but nothing that was really distracting. That said, let's go and hop in another world. Okay, so now we're heading into one of the uh, better kept secrets in the um, in the VR chat world. It's a little little world we like to call Drinking Night. <laughs> Just kidding. If you played VR chat ever before, you have almost certainly been in or heard about this world. This is a very popular spot for people to hang out. You get people from all over the world, and it's a lot of fun. Um, I am noticing some hitching in here. I'm curious to see what my ping looks like. We got 110 pings. So that's this is probably a server that's based a little further away from where I am. Whoop, didn't need to do that. Um, we'll go ahead and see. The, the biggest limiting factor we're probably running into here is just uh, the server itself. Um, but just to see if we can get some better performance, let's turn off post processing. The tricky thing with VR chat is if you know you happen to be at a server that's um, that's maybe located in England or something like that, and you're in the middle of the U.S., then it can be a lot. Uh, it can be difficult to get around, you know, poor internet problems. Uh, but one of the nice things is you can adjust the settings, and that'll at least kind of smooth out some of the performance issues. A little bit of hitching and everything. You know, we have a decent amount of avatars in here. We got somebody's a hot tub, <laughs> but. Uh, I mean, it's certainly playable. I would say this is not ideal, uh, but that really comes more down to the server itself rather than um, the graphics card's lack of performance. So if we go into this world here, I can see that little kind of like whip back and forth. I can see it sometimes. You get a little bit of that smearing, but overall, perfectly playable. Uh, if I had to guess, I would say we might be around like 60 FPS, um, decent frame times, but um, Yep, it's a pretty dang, pretty dang solid. Plenty of fun. <laughs> um, I will just say that I know several other people in VR chat, and I actually know somebody who has a 3080 Ti, and at times they've actually got worse frame rates than me. That's not because this card is just so amazing in terms of performance. It's really just because this game is so much more bound based off of your location and your internet speed uh, rather than the performance of your GPU. Okay, so I know it was only two games, but I wanted to highlight these two games because they are some of the more difficult games to run on VR. Um, VR chat is more difficult to run because there's a lot of different avatars. There's a lot of unpredictability with that game. You never quite know what you're going to run into, and you never quite know if a server is going to be optimized or near your location. And, and in many cases, you might not have a choice to just bring all your friends to a different world that you're going to have better performance in. Boneworks is just a heavy, graphically intensive game with a lot of physics, so that can be difficult to run on a lot of systems. So with all that said, if you're just looking to play games like Beat Saber or maybe Job Simulator, maybe Tetris Effect, a lot of those games that are not super intense graphically, they're gonna run totally fine on this card. A lot of what I was trying to do was stress test the performance and show you kind of a worst case scenario with this card. If you wanna play Boneworks on slightly lower settings, you're gonna have really terrific performance with this, even with a higher end headset that maybe has a higher resolution or higher frame rates. I had some issues getting my FPS and frame times to display while I was recording this, which got really, really annoying. But from looking at some of the graphs, I was able to see that I was exceeding 100 FPS in certain areas on totally maxed out settings in Boneworks. And the lowest FPS that I was seeing in those worst case scenario areas was about 52 FPS. So that's not ideal, but if that's the worst case scenario with the highest possible settings, then that is pretty dang solid. I will make a quick point of saying that if your primary intention with your gaming rig is to play VR games, it's probably worth spending a little bit more money. Something like a 3060 Ti or a 6600 XT is going to be better suited for a lot of these VR games, especially as they become more graphically intensive as time goes on. But if you're just looking to have a gaming PC or maybe a multi-purpose PC that you can play VR with uh, and still have decent performance, then the RX 6600 is gonna be fantastic. Keep an eye on the prices, try and snag one at MSRP. And if you're curious about learning a little bit more about overclocking and undervolting and increasing your performance a little bit with this card, then stay tuned, hit the subscribe button, and I'll be talking about that in a future video. But that's just a little quick one for you today. Hope you guys have a great weekend, or whatever part in the week it is. Have fun, play VR, do gamer stuff. I don't have a sign-off yet, so that's I guess that's my sign-off.